morning, church. You guys want to stand to your feet? Let's jump into worship this morning. Who's excited to be here? I know I am. Yeah.
darkness to die And as you speak
we lift our hands up to you this morning. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence in this room. We thank you for your presence in every room. For those that are watching online, those that will be viewing later, we thank you for your presence being right there with them as well. Lord, I thank you that it's your presence that breaks the yoke of bondage. It's your presence that turns situations around. It's your presence that does the impossible. Well, we were just singing about how you do impossible things. There's nothing impossible with you. And Lord, I thank you that it's your presence that changes those things. Father, my prayer this morning is that you help us to remember that when we step into a relationship with you, your presence steps on the inside of us. So when we walk into circumstances, when we walk into situations, when we walk into a room, your presence shows up because it's on the inside of us. And so, Lord, I thank you that impossibilities are becoming possibilities. I thank you that circumstances are turning around. Lord, I thank you that things are changing because we showed up. Because when we show up, your presence shows up because you live on the inside of us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us everywhere that we go. I thank you for ministering to us today. Thank you for your peace. I thank you for your love. Overwhelming joy. Lord, we love you today. We thank you for all that you're doing in us, all that you're doing through us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to connect with a local body. Holy Spirit, I thank you for changing our lives, turning them around, for leading us in a new direction. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated for a moment. You know, um, the boys have, they are uh, big fans of Star Wars right now, and Baby Yoda in particular, the child, right? And uh, they have these t-shirts, and it's the child, and it's in, so it's the Mandalorian, right? And he's standing there, you know, in the full armor and everything, and he has this, like, little satchel type thing on over the shoulder, and it has a little, the little satchel hanging here, and the child, Baby Yoda, is sitting in that, right? And, you know, he's, his head is sticking out. And on the t-shirt, it says, where I go, he goes, and obviously, you know, like for Baby Yoda to get around, you know, in that particular, like I'm looking at that and I'm like, okay, so yeah, he has to go with you everywhere you go. But when I saw the t-shirt, I thought, that's prophetic, right? That's scriptural as well. Because really where you go, the Holy Spirit goes when you have a relationship with God, right? Because he comes to live on the inside of you, you know? So, you know, as we were singing that song, like that's just what I kept thinking, like just where I go, he goes. Like, he lives on the inside of me. You know, it's not some distant thing out there that I'm trying to lure in, if you will, right? Because he's already on the inside of me. And so when I walk into a room, he walks in too. Circumstances begin to change when I show up, right? You know, we have to, you know, we were talking the very first Sunday of, of this uh, year about connecting with God, right? Making that a massive priority this year that we connect with the Father. And the more we connect with Him and His Word and we begin to see ourselves the way He sees us, things begin to change, right? Because I see myself walking around with Him on the inside of me, right? I see myself with it. When I walk into a circumstance, it might be scary in the natural. I might not know what, you know, like in my own natural mind, I might not know what to do. But here's the thing, I know I can tap into the one on the inside of me, right? Because that's really where I want to live from is being so tapped into him that I always just react the way he would react because I'm listening to him, right? Smith Wigglesworth said, I don't pray for more than 15 minutes, but I don't go 15 minutes without praying, right? And he wasn't talking about, you know, oh, Lord, let's bow our head and close our eyes. You know, like that's not what he's talking about. He's saying, you know what, I'm just in constant communication with the Father. Why? Because he lives on the inside of me, right? Um. You know, I remember when uh, Pastor Mark and Miss Trina were here, and I picked him up from the airport, and we're just driving along, and he's just like, 
having a conversation like in the car. He's like, oh, thank you, Lord. You, you know, this service is going to be so awesome and you are so good to us. And, and we, hey, is there a Starbucks nearby where we can get some coffee? And I'm like, yeah, you know, so we stop and get a coffee. And he's like, man, Jesus, you've just been so good to us. You know, and I'm just like, wait, what? You know, like, but the thing is, he's just in communication with the one that lives on the inside of him. And if we live from that place, then we will respond and we will act accordingly, right? Um, and so, you know, as we're singing that song, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yeah, you're welcome here, right? I, well, that's where I want to live from is that understanding that he's here because I'm here, right? If I'm here, he's here. If you show up, he showed up, right? And that means things are changing. Circumstances are, are, are being turned around for your good. Amen? Amen. God is so good to us. Well, welcome to Rock Family Church this morning. Um, you know, again, the penguins are out this morning, and uh, woo, praise the Lord. We're getting through the winter. <laughs> um, no, I trust you all potentially enjoyed the snow, even if it was just from sitting inside your house and staring out the window at it. Um, but uh, good to see you all. Good to see your smiling faces. Good to have you all that are joining online as well. Uh, we want to say welcome to Rock Family Church. If it is your first time with us or you are newer to Rock Family Church, I'd love for you to stop by the next steps table right over here when we dismiss so I can shake your hand and have the opportunity to meet you and I put a gift in your hand. So if that's you, please do so. If it's you and you're joining us online, if you can let us know in the comments that you are joining us for the first time so that we can connect with you as well, that would be awesome. A couple things I want to make you aware of. Um, growth track is currently happening, and so those of you, maybe you're newer or you know, brand new to Rock Family, or maybe you've been around for a while and you're like, man, I want to make this my home. Like, I want to connect with Rock Family. I want to know more. Like, how do I get plugged in? All of those kinds of things. That's what Growth Track is all about. Um, and so if that's you and you're wanting to know more, you're wanting to grow more, you're wanting to plug in, you want to become a part of Rock Family, be a member, that kind of a thing, then I encourage you to get signed up for that. Um, we will be doing that again, and um, you can sign up as well at Next Steps for that, and uh, we encourage you to do so. It's uh, going to be a good time. So we provide lunch. It's three Sundays in a row. Um, it's not long. It's brief, and, you know, it's just a good time. So I encourage you to be a part of that. Groups have started, so if you have not already, stop by the Rock Groups wall on your way out today in the lobby. I know we have those on our website as well, so if you're watching online, you can check out all of our group info there and uh, find out which group works best for you because it's a phenomenal way for you to, what's the word? Connect, exactly. And uh, so I encourage you to check out those. We've got, you know, the groups aren't something to fill your calendar. Those are something to help you to connect with people, to build relationships, to grow in your journey with God. Like it's all there on purpose. And so we've got different, different time frames different um, topics, different subjects, things like that. So find the one that works best for you, or maybe there's more than one. That's okay. Um, but get plugged in and check out those. Those are going on. And then one last thing, I want to encourage you to be here in two weeks. Everybody say two weeks. Two weeks is our Vision Sunday for 2022. And uh, so we'll get to look at 2021 and what all we accomplished and what God helped us to do and what we are looking at for this year. And so I'm excited about that. So make sure you're here for that in two weeks. All right. So it's going to be a good time. I'm going to give you the next 60 seconds to stand up and uh, turn around, shake hands with a couple people, and uh, introduce yourself to someone you may not even know, and then have a seat. Well, once again, welcome to Rock Family Church this morning. We're going to go ahead and continue with our giving today. Um, for those of you that are watching online, you have options that you can give electronically to help you out with that. I know we have many folks that watch online that just mail it in. You can do that as well. If you're here in person and you want to give electronically, you can text it to give. You can see up on the screens how you do the, uh, the different options. You can do it online. If you want to give in person, there's envelopes in the back of the chair in front of you. You can grab one of those. 
And uh, when we dismiss this morning, you can drop that off at Rock Central in the appropriate place. Um, Two things. I want to read a particular scripture as we're getting ready to give. And, you know, I've been kind of talking about this a little bit here recently. And um, what I want to do, you know, I want to be more intentional about our giving. Um, I know for me, for example, I love the fact that we can do it electronically because then I can give when I get paid, right? I don't have to wait till Sunday. Um, And so I, you know, do it then. So, but what I want to do is I want to be intentional about our giving. And so if you give electronically, I want you to have your phone in hand, right? And if you're giving, you know, in person, obviously you've got your envelope. Um, But I I want to kind of talk a little bit about this as we're giving this year. And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to share, if you maybe didn't hear about the underwater volcano that erupted yesterday um, in the South Pacific. And so we have missionaries that are in the South Pacific. Um, and so the island was part of, the, uh, of Tonga. And uh, so our missionaries are on American Samoa. But if you recall, they have ministry outreaches and Bible colleges on several islands in the South Pacific. So they have been big time impacted by this. Um, as of last night, they still don't know a whole lot of detail because of communications being down. Um, I know I did see some reports that were, there were some smaller-ish tsunamis that did, that did hit the islands of um, American Samoa and some of the other islands. Tonga was hit with a, a tsunami as well. Um, nothing, you know, hugely massive in size per se because they were closer to, but, uh, uh, you know, I know the West Coast, Hawaii, all those places were under warning for tsunamis um, because of this. And there were some pictures online last night, satellite images from space that actually caught the eruption. It was that huge. Um, And Tonga was actually completely blackened because of all the ash in the sky that was falling and the debris and the rock and stuff. And so um, pretty serious thing. And so, you know, we want to pray for them as we're, you know, we're given today. Because here's the thing, when we give, uh, again, it doesn't just stay here, right? It doesn't just pay our bills here. Like we send out at least 20% all over the world. And so our missionaries are impacted by that. And that's part of our giving, right? You know, and so um, just want you to, to be aware of that and be praying for them. Um, but I wanted to read a, a particular scripture. And this particular scripture is in Proverbs chapter 11. And you don't have to go there. I'll just read it to you. Um, but in verse 24 of Proverbs 11, it says this, it says, give freely and become more wealthy, be stingy and lose everything. Now you've heard me say before, if you've been around, that a lot of times when we give, we think subtraction, right? Because, okay, like if I go to the store and I buy something, I have to subtract that from my bank account, right? And so a lot of times I, I, I see my giving at church the same way, right? It's like, okay, I gave 20 bucks and so I need to subtract 20 bucks. But really what's happening is my giving is enabling a multiplication process to start. And so when I'm giving, God's multiplying what I have left and making it go farther than I've ever dreamt it could go before. And if you've started giving and you've started tithing, you are beginning to see that, if not have already seen that happening in your finances. You know, I I look at the fact that, I was just thinking about this the other day, you know, for us, we we give 20% of everything that we make. Um, You know, we we give 20%. Well, then we also, we, you know, we do the whole Dave Ramsey thing, right? Pay God, pay yourself. So we we tithe, we give our offerings, and we put money in savings so that we're paying ourselves, you know? So um, 30% or more of our income is is right there. And then you've got insurance, right? Which we all know is dirt cheap. Um, Yes, I'm kidding. And, um, you know, so I mean, all of these things, and yet I look at it and go... But yeah, God still has totally blessed us, right? I mean, we can, still ha- we can still buy food. We can still pay our house payment, right? You know, we, we, we have vehicles that run. Like, I'm thankful for that, right? God is still blessing us. And I, when I look at it and I go, okay, if 20% is here and at least 10, you know, 15% is going here and then, you know, another 20% is going here for insurance, like you look at all the percentages and where they're going and then it's like, how is it that we still have And it's not because we're making millions upon millions upon millions of dollars, right? It's because God is multiplying. I know you laugh, right? My wife is up here laughing. (laughs) It's because God is multiplying what's left. I mean, you could be making $40,000 a year 
and giving and God's multiplying it and making it the equivalent of $75,000 a year. How does that work? I don't know, but I know his word works. And I know when it says that give freely and become more wealthy, that doesn't make sense. But yet it does because I've seen it in action over and over and over and over again. And so I just say that to encourage you that scripture is on your side when you're giving, right? Scripture is working on your behalf. And so I encourage you, wherever you may be, you may be at a place where you've never given before because it just makes you want to throw up, right? Because you got that knot knot in the pit of your stomach. That's where I was when I first started. But here's the thing. I want to encourage you to just start somewhere and allow God to begin to move in your finances and just watch and see how quickly it happens and how easily you go, wow, that really wasn't that big of a deal. And it really does work, right? Right? And then you get more addicted to that because it's like, oh my gosh, God, like this stuff's for real, right? And so I want you to see, I want you to experience what the word says that, you know, you can give freely and become more wealthy. And here's the thing, who doesn't want to become more wealthy? I mean, if I were to ask, okay, who doesn't want to be, become more wealthy? I don't, nobody's going to raise their hand. But here's the thing, why do I want to become more wealthy? Are there things that I want to do personally? Yeah but there's more impact I want to have. I want to be able to do more, right? I want to be able to impact more. I want to help more people that are waking up to the effects of a volcano, literally destroying, right? I want to be able to impact and help them because it costs money to do those things, right? We all know that. And I know that when I'm faithful with what he's put in my hands, that he's faithful to me. So just know that whatever God is speaking to your heart today, that he's faithful, okay? I know it might be scary, but he's faithful, right? And whatever you, whatever you decide to do, watch his faithfulness show up on your behalf. Watch it stretch and go farther than you ever thought before. Watch blessings start to come your way that you never saw it coming from before, amen? And you'll get just as excited about it. Um, let's, let's hold our... Our phone, again, if you're an electronic giver, hold your phone. If you're giving in person or you give normally in person, it may not be, you know, I know everybody, you know, some people, you know, you get paid once a month. And so it goes in that envelope once a month. But if you give by envelope, hold an envelope, right? We're just being more intentional about it, right? That's what we're doing. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. I thank you that we have the opportunity to to give to you what you've already put in our hands. Lord, you've entrusted it to us and we want to be faithful with it. And so, Lord, I thank you that Whatever the amount may be is not the big deal right now. It's, it's really our heart. It's really making that adjustment in our heart that we're okay returning to you or giving to you what you were originally put in our hands to begin with. And so, Father, we thank you that we have this opportunity to do that. We thank you that it's really a stretching and a growing on our part. But I thank you, Lord, that it's an opportunity to impact lives all over the world. Lord, I thank you that it's going to the South Pacific and it's helping those families that are being impacted by this volcano that's erupted. Lord, I thank you that it's going to Guatemala and impacting those families that are just now starting to be able to come out um, that have been locked down and have been a part of just things that have been happening and, you know, been doing without. I think that it's impacting families in Uganda that are a uh, same thing. They're just now starting to open back up. Lord, some of these families have been without. And so, you know, our giving is going there and it's helping feed those families. Lord, our, our giving is going all over the world. And Lord, I thank you that you're taking it, you're multiplying it, you're stretching it, making it go farther than we ever dreamt possible. And Lord, I thank you that when we give, we're not subtracting from our account. We're actually multiplying to our account. And so, Lord, I thank you for that multiplication process taking place today. I thank you for helping us to see it multiply and stretch and go farther than we ever dreamt possible. And Lord, I thank you that you are so faithful to see to it that all of our needs are met and that we have extra that we can be a blessing to others. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So we... uh, have the privilege of serving on the board for our missionaries that are in Uganda. And so we had a a Zoom board meeting yesterday. Um, Super cool how technology works that, you know, we've got board members that are in Oregon and in Texas and here, and our missionaries are in Uganda, and we can all meet via Zoom and see one another's faces online. And so, you know, we met with them for a couple hours yesterday and just got to hear about what's happening over in Uganda. And so just some really cool, exciting things there. And, you know, they were sharing about how, you know, things are just really finally starting to, to open back up there. And 
Um, so, you know, everything there is way different than here. Um, like serious, serious, strict precautions <laughs> in place. Um, they have a curfew right now that they are under that, you know, you can't be out of your house after 7 p.m. Um, there for a while, you weren't allowed to be out of your house, like in a vehicle at all, like no vehicles on the road whatsoever. Um, you had to stay home. And if you needed to get anything, you had to walk. And, uh, you know, so those are, that's why, like, when I talk about how we've been giving extra to our missionaries throughout all of this, because they're trying to help feed people in situations like that, because the people can't get to the store, you know? So um, anyway, so things are starting to open back up for them. So that's a blessing and, you know, just some awesome things happening there. So excited to be a part of that. We're going to go ahead and get started today, continuing in our series. And our series is simply, this month is simply the word connect, right? And um, so I know that our first Sunday of this month was connect the dots. And last month was the love, last month, last week was love connection. And uh, so this week, I bet you can't guess what the title is for today. Connect Four. Good guess. That's a really good guess. Yeah, so today's title is Connect Four. And uh, anybody ever played this version of Connect Four before? Like one of these big ones? No? Oh, man. It's a lot of fun. Um, I actually swiped this out of the elementary classroom. Um, they like to play it. But uh, anyway, so today's title is Connect Four. And the reason I chose this title um, is because the game Connect Four is actually, they say, one of the best games to play with kids. Um, because it helps them to develop strategic thinking skills. Pretty wild. Um, and obviously you can totally understand that because when you're playing, you know, you're trying to be very sneaky about where you're putting yours so that you can get the four in a row, right? Without them knowing, oh, I'm going here to do four in a row, you know, like, because they can see what's going on. Um, but it helps kids, again, to, to develop those strategic thinking skills. And so today what I want to talk about, so the first Sunday was connect the dots, and we were talking about connecting with God for the year and just what his plan is for your year and that kind of a thing. And then last week, love connection, connecting with your spouse. And so this week, connect four, we're going to talk about connecting with your family. All right, so some, some relational things, obviously, in this series of where to connect or re where to really spend our time this year as far as priorities go, right? I know a lot of times we're like, man, this year I'm going to make more money, or this year I'm going to get a new car, or this year we're going to build a house, or this year, you know, whatever it may be. But I want to, because everybody says this year I'm going to get more healthy, right? And then at the end of the year, you're like, man, right? You know, I'm, I'm a part of an online group that um, does a challenge at the beginning of the year, 75 hard. And um, it, it's interesting to see that some of these people, they, you know, they, they join and they do a phenomenal job. And once the challenge is over, it's like some of those disciplines fall away. Why is that? Because there's no longer that connection, right? That connectivity when you're online and you're posting every day and you're encouraging one another, we need that, right? And when you don't have that, it makes it more of a challenge, right? Because then you're on your own. And so we need the connectivity. And so that's why we're talking about this whole series of Connect. And uh, so today we're talking about Connect for connecting with your family, all right? Um, so I, I thought it was super interesting just kind of Googling around and playing around and looking at things. And um, as I'm looking at the topic of spending time with family and the importance of that, um, you know, as we were talking with the missionaries in Uganda, you know, that's something that they were talking about how, you know, um, you know, they're just really trying to be more intentional about spending some really focused, you know, planned time with their kids. And, you know, we were sharing kind of how we were doing the same thing. And um, so what I, I found super interesting is some information from some pediatric studies that have been done. And so some pedi this particular article I was reading, they were saying that pediatric studies show that kids that eat regularly with their families are less likely to show or develop depression symptoms. What's the key there? Connecting with their families. The studies also show that negative family relationships can trigger or worsen mental health issues. Now, there's a lot of that happening right now, we know, with, you know, everything going on with the pandemic. 
why is all of that being triggered so hard right now? And I, you know, and I, I've shared this before because everything right now is about disconnecting, right? Everything is about stay away, don't talk to, avoid, like it's all about disconnect, right? And so it's no wonder that all of these things are being triggered so hard right now because people were not created to disconnect. We were created to be connected. And so that's why we're talking about this this month is because, you know, connecting with God is so hugely important for your success in life. Connecting with your spouse is so hugely important for your own well-being, but also your spouse's well-being for that relationship. It's also hugely important for your family. And then connecting with your family, massively important for the health and well-being of your family and your kids. It's important that we connect with them to give them that healthy life, that healthy environment that they need to develop to become all that God has called them to be. So I'm going to give you some pointers. Um, We're going to look at a few things here when it comes to kids. Um, Here are some things that we as adults and as parents need to do. You know, so when we do baby dedications here at Rock Family Church, um, you know, we we bring the, the families up here onto the platform and we have some things that we speak and that, you know, some declarations and that the families commit to. But we always, always, always include you all as the church body. Because here's the thing. Raising kids is not just a single, hey, mom and dad, you're on your own. Good luck right? It's all of us being supportive and being a part of that journey, right? Why? Because we all need to be connected, all right? So here are some things that when it comes to kids that we need to do. Number one, we need to be praying for them, okay? Praying for them. Let your kids hear you pray for them and their mom and dad and or dad, right? So mom, they need to hear you pray for dad. Dad, they need to hear you pray for mom. Even if you're not still married to mom or dad, they need to hear you pray for them, right? Because what are we doing ultimately? We're helping them to develop, to be a healthy, you know, God-centered individual. And so let them hear you pray. But here are some things that you need to pray for kids, all right? We've got several areas here that we want to talk about. When you're praying for your kids, you want to pray for their faith, okay? You want to pray that they're faith is connected. Now, John 10, 27, it says this, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, they follow me, right? The ultimate goal here, parents, is that your children learn to hear his voice and follow after him, correct? Yes. How do they get there? They've got to hear your voice that's hearing his voice first, right? You need to be connected to them and connected to the word so that they hear his voice through you. Because here's the thing, when you're raising a child naturally, when it starts out, you know, when you bring that baby home, you have to feed them, correct? You have to change them. You have to do everything for them. But the ultimate goal <laughs> is that they do it themselves eventually, right? Like, parents, do you remember when it was like when you didn't have to feed them all the time and they could actually start to feed themselves? It was like, it's liberating, right? It's like, oh, sweet, like they can do it themselves finally, You know, and then you get to the point where they can actually go and get food out of the pantry and do it themselves, right? And you're like, oh, sweet. I don't have to like go get their food for them all the time. Like they can go to the pantry themselves and get it. Like there are certain little milestones, right? And all of these are just markers on the way to eventually them being self-sustaining and able to do it themselves, right? It's the same thing with faith. When when, When they're first born, they're dependent upon you. You have to develop that and pour that into them and walk them through that journey. And the goal is to get them to a place where they can then walk on their own and have a relationship with God and hear from him and commune with him, all of those things, right? So I want to be praying for their faith, that their faith continues to grow, that that relationship continues to grow, that they stay connected to the Father. Friends, I want to pray for my kids' friends, Proverbs 12, 26 And the New King James Version says this, The righteous should choose his friends carefully, for the way of the wicked leads them astray. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says this, Don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. Proverbs 27, 17, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. 
I want to be praying for my kids' friends, right? I want, I want them to have influence. I want my kids to have influence in the lives of those that they hang out with and they're around. But I also want to know that the influence that's coming back to my kids is a good influence, right? I want to know that they're being influenced in a positive way. And here's the thing. You want to... Parents, when things are happening maybe with relationships that your kids have, the tendency is to do what? You need to stay around, stay away from that person. You need to stop talking to that person. You don't need to be with that person, right? One of the very best things that you can do, because here's the thing, you, you obviously want to share those things with them, but one of the very best things that you can do is pray. You want to see those things get cut off real quick? You want to see those things shift real quick? You want to see those influences just for whatever reason walked away? Pray. God's so much more concerned than even we are with our kids because here's the thing, ultimately, they're his kids, right? I mean, if you will, they're on loan from him, right? It's just our responsibility to raise them up, but ultimately, they're his kids, right? And so pray for their friends. You want to pray for your kid's future. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Pray for your child's future. Pray for their future spouse. That's a big one. Mark 10, starting in verse 6. For God made them male and female from the beginning of creation. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Colossians 3, 18 and 19. And I'm going to read this one from the Passion Translation. It says, Let every wife be supportive and tenderly devoted to her husband, for this is a beautiful illustration of our devotion to Christ. Let every husband be filled with cherishing love for his wife and never be insensitive toward her. Why am I praying these things? Because this is how I want my, spouse, my child to act towards their spouse, and this is how I want their spouse to be towards them, right? So I'm praying now for their spouse. I'm praying that God brings them across the path of the right person for them, because here's the thing why. God knows the plans he has for them, right? He already knows what it, what it is that they're to accomplish while they're here on this earth. So you want the right person to come along to help fulfill that plan, right? Just like you did for yourself. So I'm praying for their spouse. Another thing I want to pray for for my kids, I want to pray for their character, for their character, that they would make right choices to avoid heartache and setback. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 57 and 58 says, But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Big word. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. You want your child to know that they have victory over sin and, the de and death, right? And to know that you, you want your kids to be strong and immovable, right? You're praying for their character. You don't want them to be moved by everything else that's going on around them, right? You don't want them to be moved by influences or things that are happening. You want them to be moved by what God says. Next, you want to pray for their health. 1 Peter 2.24. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. You want to be praying for their health. We have a lot of folks right now praying for their kids regarding the health situation, right? Because of everything that's going around. You always want to be praying for your kids in that area, right? Speaking the word of God over them, speaking, declaring what the Bible has to say that by his stripes you are healed, right? So I want to be declaring the word over my kids. All right, so I want to be praying for my kids. That's one, one area, right? And connecting with my kids. The next area that I want to talk about as far as connecting with your kids, and it's, you know, the first one was pray. The second one is speak life, okay? Speak life over your kids. Now, here's the thing. Your kids need to hear your voice, right? We were talking about praying. They need to hear you praying, but they also need to hear your voice, they need to hear you speaking life over them. They need to know that that comes from you, right? Because what happens, see, we are, we're all wired that we want to hear those words of affirmation, right? We want to hear that encouragement. And what tends to happen is if I don't hear that from my family, I'm going to be gravitating toward a place where I hear that from, right? So you want your kids to hear that coming from you 
right? We want, you want your kids to hear you speaking life over them first and foremost above anybody else. I want other people in my kid's life that speak life over them, yes, but I want them to hear it from me, right? They need to hear me declaring scripture over them. They need to hear me declaring, you know, um, uh, one of the things that I was thinking about in this, uh, Matthew, the scripture here, Matthew 3, 16 and 17, and this is as Jesus was being baptized, and it says, you know, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. Your kids need to hear your voice. And they need to hear you speaking words of affirmation over them. They need to hear you speaking words of encouragement, words of love, right? They want it, the, our kids are wired to need to hear that just like you and I are wired to need to hear that. So let them hear that from you. And here's the thing. Maybe you've messed up in that area. Been there, done that. And I had to go to my kids. See, part of speaking life is, is me being real with them sometimes too and just saying, you know what? Daddy messed up and I apologize. They need to hear you apologize to them, right? And say, you know what? I messed up. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. You know, I, I remember um, <laughs> one night um, I'd gotten mad at the boys for something. And, you know, and when we are getting ready for bed, we go opposite ways. So like one night I go with Liam and Kelly goes with Jason. And then the next night we switch. And then we, the next night we go back. And so we kind of bounce back and forth. And so it was my night to, to go in with Liam to his room. And we, you know, we sit and we read scripture and we say prayers and, you know, we'll play a game on our phone or just something kind of just our ritual. And um, so when we first went in there and, you know, he got in his bed and I got him all tucked in and stuff. And I sat down next to him and I said, buddy, I, is we and I'm like, before we do anything tonight, I said, I need to do something first, and I need to apologize, and you need to hear me say that. You know, I said, Daddy got upset, and I shouldn't have, and, you know, I'm, I'm asking you to forgive me for doing that. And he sits up in bed, and he goes, Daddy, it's okay. He goes, can I have a hug? You know, and so Liam's our hugger, and so he gives me a hug, you know, and so I was just like, all right, cool, like, you know, he's not bothered by it, you know, um, but our kids need to hear that, because that's part of us speaking life over them, you know. They need to hear that, you know what, I don't have it all together, I'm not perfect, but they also need to know that when I mess up, what do I need to do? I need to own up to it, right? That's part of responsibility and taking responsibility for your actions. We don't like to do that, right? I mean, it's just like, I want to be right, you know? Um, and so that's part of it, though, is, is letting our kids hear that. Many times your words are what's needed to turn around a situation in your child's life. And you may not even necessarily always know that the words you're sharing are doing that. But your words of affirmation, your words of speaking life over your child, many times will turn a situation around. Sometimes it gives them the courage to turn a situation around. And so they need to hear that from you as a, as a parent. Speak vision over your kids. You know, um, maybe ask God, like, God, what is your vision for their life? What do you see? Because here's the thing, as parents, we all go, man, I want my kids to do this, right? I want my kids to be, I want, unfortunately, that's a big deal right now. You see a lot of parents trying to, you know, I'm going to mold them into this. Well, what does God have for them? That's the first thing is I need to be asking God, what do you have for them? Not to say that they can't have fun and they can't do all these extracurriculars or do anything else, but God, first and foremost, what is the plan, the assignment that you have for them? And then begin to speak vision, begin to speak life over them regarding the plan that God has for them, right? They need to hear that coming from you. Andy Stanley said this, he said, the most significant visions are not cast by great orators from a stage. They are cast at the bedsides of our children. Speak life into your kids. Speak life over your kids. When they do wrong, they need you to speak life over them, right? Kids need to be disciplined. Can we just say that? They need to be disciplined. Yes, yes, they do. Hordes of scriptures talk about this. Your children need to be disciplined, okay? But they also need to be discipled. They need to be discipled. They need to be raised up, right? Hearing the word spoken over them. A lot of times we go straight to punishment. The kids don't need the punishment. They need the discipline, correct? 
Now, here's the thing. Discipline sometimes means what? You're going to lose some, you're going to lose some things that you don't want to lose, right? I mean, one of the things that our boys hate to lose is their iPads, right? So when they're not doing what they need to be doing, one of the very first things that they lose, their iPad. Why did you take that away from me? I didn't take it away from you. You chose to give it to me. See, they've got to learn to take responsibility for their actions, right? But they also need to learn that all of their actions, there's things that come along with that, right? And so in all of that too, though, when they're doing things right, you know what they get? They get rewarded as well, right? So they need, they need that balance in life. But again, they need you to speak life over them, even when they've done wrong, right? I mean, there's discipline that has to take place, but they still need to hear you behind that speaking life over them. Even though you made a bad choice, you know, we've done the, Liam tends to be this, this way where, you know, he does something and we'll, we'll talk about it and then he starts crying and he'll say, you know, I just, I'm so stupid or I made a dumb choice. And, you know, so we have to tell him like, no, buddy, you made a bad choice. Yeah, but here's the thing. We all make bad choices. That doesn't make you a bad person, right? You're just a person who made a bad choice at this point in time and that can change right? Because here's the thing. If we don't begin to instill that in them and speak life over them, what happens? They internalize things and they have this mental image of themselves that's not lined up with the word of God. And then we have a very bad outcome, right? So they need to hear us speaking life over them. All right. Number three, number one, pray. Number two, speak life. Number three, give time. Give time. Make home life fun. Play games with your kids, right? Make life at home fun. Turn the TV off sometimes and just play, right? Uh, Liam especially, but the boys love to wrestle, you know? And so sometimes you just have to turn the TV off and get in the floor, put your phone down, right? And just wrestle all over the floor, you know, play fight with them. You know, they want to bounce off the furniture and, you know, drop bows and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And Liam, you know, he wants to take karate Um, because he wants to learn ninja kicks and flips and all this stuff. And, um, but just make, make it fun, right? Have fun with them. Um, you know, I, and when I was doing some, some research on this, like I said, just connecting with kids and I, I was reading this article that one particular teacher, um, in class one day said, oh, you know, like they, they had finished up what they were doing, but she told all the kids, she's like, okay, you know, we've got some free time. And so here's what I want you to do put your books away, you know, so they all put their stuff away. And she said, and I want you to turn around and I want you to start talking with your classmates. And she said, it was super interesting to watch the response from the kids because some of them turned around and just went to town. I mean, they were just gabbing away. And others of them were so like frustrated by that. And like, you know, she, she no, noted that some of them just put their head down. Um, some of them got really mad. And so she kind of just was making her way around the room, just talking with them like, hey, what's wrong? You know, um, some of them were were mad because they just wanted to play on their phone. Some of them were mad because they didn't want to talk to people. But here's what she found out for a lot of them. It's because they didn't know how to talk. They didn't know how to carry on a conversation because there was no connectivity for them outside. And so they didn't know how to even have a conversation in school. For some of them, home life was all just everybody's on an electronic device, right? There was no connectivity. So what I'm saying is make time to put all of it away and connect. Just have some fun, right? The boys love games, and so for us, a lot of times it's playing games or wrestling or, you know, whatever that may be. Um, like yesterday, you know, I'm like, all right. You know, they played on their iPads for a while. I'm like, all right, turn them off. Why do we have to turn them off? Because we're going to watch a movie. I don't want to watch a movie. I want to play on my iPad. Parents, right? But here's what's funny. You know, they'll pitch a fit about it. And then when I turn the TV on and I start scrolling through the movies that we're going to watch, no, I don't want to watch that one. You wanted to play on your iPad. You know, and I'm like looking and, and they're both just like, no, dad, keep going, keep going. No, not that one. No, let's watch that one. And I'm like, mm-hmm, that's what I thought. And you put that movie on and they're both just like, you know? Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll do movie nights and make popcorn. And, um, but have fun. You know, like yesterday, we got out yesterday morning and went and played in the snow. It was a good time. Have, make, make home life fun, right? Um, make, make every opportunity 
to do a, a vacation or a trip or something away from home with your kids. And, you know, I remember as a kid, like for our family, like I say this and my wife was just like, what? Um, but like as a kid growing up for us, sometimes vac- like our family vacation was packing a tent and going camping at Merrimack Caverns for a week. Like, that's what we could afford, you know? And so that was vacation. You know, I'm not saying it has to be some extravagant, you know, go break the bank type thing, but just make a point to get get away from home. You know, even if it's going to spend a weekend at family's house, right? Get, have, have those things that become traditions that when your kids are older, they're like, man, you remember when we used to, right? Have those things and have fun with your kids. Surprise your kids with things that they enjoy or that, excuse me, that they like. Um, a lot of times I'll pick the boys up from school and they're like, did you bring us a surprise today? And I'm like, no. And they're like, why not? I'm like, because it's a surprise. You don't get them every day, you know? But I mean, I can bring them, I can literally bring them a bag of Swedish fish and a little bag of Sour Patch, or Sour Gum, uh, Sour Patch Kids. And they are just tickled excited, right? Again, you know, it's a whole 50 cents, okay? It doesn't have to be big things, but just surprise them every once in a while with things that you know that they enjoy. You know, it was cold, so I like to do, make hot chocolate as a surprise for the boys when it's really cold. You know, when you put Cool Whip on it and all that kind of stuff. You know, just little things like that to just have some fun with them. You know, um, when I was a youth pastor um, involved in youth ministry for 20 years or so, um, but one of the things that I noticed is that the students that tended to have the greatest challenges in life were typically the ones that had the least amount of connection at home. It's so vital that we connect with our kids. You know, spend time growing with God. You know, bring your kids in on that journey. Let them see what that is like. Parents, don't fall into the trap of thinking that it's the responsibility of the teachers in Rock Kids to make sure that your kids know God. Don't fall into the trap that it's the teachers at school's responsibility to make sure that your kids are disciplined. It's awful quiet, right? Don't fall into those traps because here's the thing. God entrusted their care to who first? You. Take that responsibility. Deuteronomy 11, verses 18 through 21. says, so commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these words of mine. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, so that as long as the sky remains above the earth, you and your children may flourish in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors. Love that scripture. Because what is it saying? Relate things back to the scripture all the time. Right? I mean, you could be in the car talking and relate things that you hear on the radio or things that you see. Relate things back to the scripture. Okay, do that with your kids. Um, parents, if you have kids that are in the Rock Kids department, they do, like in class, the curriculum follows a series, right? And so each series has a particular memory verse, right? Talk to your kids about the memory verse that they have. Help them to memorize it, you know, because they get rewarded for that. So, you know, all of those things of just helping them to grow in that journey as well. One last area I want to cover, and then we'll wrap up. You know, this... So far, we've been talking really, you know, connecting with family. We've been talking about it really from the perspective of connecting with your kids. Um, but I also want to talk about, because the number for some of you, you don't have kids yet. Some of you, you don't want kids. Um, but here's the thing. We're all somebody else's kid, right? So I want to talk about maybe, um, you know, connecting with your family, connecting with your parents or with your siblings, okay? A few things there. Um, number one, we were talking about giving time to our kids. Give time to your family as well. Make sure that you spend time, right, with your parents. Make sure you spend time with your siblings. Um, You know, make sure that you have concentrated time to spend with them, right? Spend time with them. Uh, Pray for them as well. You know, we talked about praying um, for our kids. Pray for your parents, right? Uh, Maybe you're a kid right now is still at home. Pray for your parents. Pray for wisdom on how to raise kids, Nobody's got it all figured out, right? So if you're a kid still at home and you want things to be better than what it is, pray for your parents, right? James 1 and verse 5 says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. 
pray for your parents. Pray that God would speak to them. Pray for wisdom. Pray for peace. Pray for their relationships with others. One last thing that you can do, obviously praying, you can pray for your siblings as well. Um, Same type of things, praying for wisdom for them, praying for their relationships, praying for their health, all of those same things that we talked about and praying for kids. But the last thing is then honor, honor, honor. Honor your parents, right? You know, at some point in time, parents aren't going to be around anymore. So it's so important that we honor them while they are here, right? Um, Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says this, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will live, you will have a long life on the earth. Now, I know a lot of times we really kind of focus in on that one for kids that are still living at home, right, and living underneath mom and dad's roof. But here's the thing. Even when you're not living under mom and dad's roof, you can still honor them, right? You can still show them that they have value in your life. You don't have to agree on everything. You can still honor them, right? You can still, you know, uh, and the word honor really means to, to, to have weight in your life, to, to have um, importance in your life, you know, and so you can still show your parents that you're not living with, that they carry weight in your life right? That they are important to you. So make sure that you honor your mom and dad. And you can do the same thing with your siblings. You can honor them as a sibling, right? So we want to make sure, again, that we're connecting with God this year, that we're connecting with our spouse, and that we're connecting with our family. Amen? Go ahead and stand up. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today, and uh, we just thank you for the opportunity again that we have to be here, and we thank you for being able to hear um, from your word, being able to hear from your heart today, and uh, Lord, I thank you that, again, as we're kicking off this year and really just talking about connect and um, the importance of connecting with you first and connecting with our spouse and connecting with our families, uh, Lord, I thank you that as we endeavor to do these things, as we make these things priority, that it's really going to set the course for our year. And uh, that when we get to the end of this year, that it's going to be a whole different ending than what we've ever experienced before because we've put some priorities in place and uh, we've made some things like the the forefront of our focus. And Lord, I thank you that as we apply your word to our lives, that we get the results that your word says we can have. And so I just thank you that as we connect with family and uh, we make that a priority this year, that we're going to have healthy families. We're going to have healthy Um, communication. We're going to have healthy kids. We're going to be able to see our kids walk the, 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 uh, the path that you have for them and walk out the assignment that you have for them. And Lord, I just thank you for the blessing that comes from that. And uh, Lord, I thank you for healthy families here at Rock Family Church and in our community. You know, our, our, our goal, our desire really is to, to raise the standard in this community. And, um, and part of that is just helping families to, to live healthier than they already are. And uh, Lord, I, th- I thank you that there's so much health coming as we just put your word first in everything. And so as we put it first in our relationships, we see those results. And so Lord, I thank you for doing amazing things in our families. I thank you for being a blessing to us and allowing us to be a blessing to others. So we thank you for all of the things that you do for us. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your uh, assignment here on earth. And I thank you for using us to impact the lives of others. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Now, one last thing that I want to do uh, for those of you that are here and you say, you know what? Um, you know, I don't have a relationship with God. I have not connected with him. Um, our goal is that you connect with him first and foremost. The greatest life-changing thing you will ever do is to have a relationship with God, um, the one who created you, the one who gave you the assignment that you have for your life. Um, and so we want to make sure that you have that connection. And so if you're here today and you say, you know what, I do not have a relationship with him. I've never invited him into my life. Uh, we want to pray with you today, and we want to give you that opportunity. Um, so if that's you, you're here today, and you say, you know what, I, I don't have a relationship with him, but I want to. I want to know that, I, that you know, when I step off into eternity that I'm on my way to heaven. You know, I want to know that I have a relationship with him so I can know the plan that he has for me. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand because uh, we want to pray with you today. And if you're watching online and you say, you know what, that's me. I don't have a relationship with God, but I want to as well. I'm going to ask you just to let us know in the comment section so that we can also be um, able to connect with you on that. So you can just say, hey, I'm praying that for the first time, or that's me. Just let us know because uh, we want to pray with you and we're going to do that together. So let's all pray. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my past 
And I thank you for wiping it away. I thank you that you have a plan for me and I'm going to walk it out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, here's what I want to do. Again, you have been around, you know this. I want you to clap. I want you to celebrate for those that have prayed that prayer for the very first time. And again, the reason we're doing that is because the scripture says that all of heaven rejoices when one person gives their life to the Lord. And so we want to be a part of that rejoicing as well. So again, if you're watching online and you say, hey, that's me. I prayed that for the first time. Let us know. If you're here and you say, you know what? I prayed that for the first time. Meet me right back there at Next Steps as well um, because I want to be able to shake your hand and we want to get some material to you to help you grow in that journey because, again, our vision here is to help you raise the standard, which means we want you to be able to take life higher than it's ever been before. No matter where it was when you came in, we want it to go higher. Amen. Um, So allow us to do that for you. Um, If you are giving today in person, you have an envelope. You can drop that off as we dismiss here. Um, If you haven't already, as we're dismissing, check out the Rock Groups wall. Check out what groups we have going on this semester. Get plugged into a group and uh, let that be a blessing to you. Other than that, have a great week and uh, we'll see you guys next time.